And so Andrew says, well, did you bring it up? Did you say anything? And I'm tired. Molly is so tired. <laughs> Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. Now, if you're new here, welcome. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please go ahead, hit that like button for me. It helps this channel grow. Now, I don't even know, I don't, I don't know how to feel about this episode. Like, I, it's very bittersweet for me because I really, really felt like Molly and Issa were going to make amends, but I guess only one of Issa's relationships could actually make it. And I'm glad that it was her relationship with Lawrence. Sorry, Molly. Listen, I said what I said, okay? Let's get into this video. <laughs> this episode opens up and it picks up right where it left off. I was a little nervous when I was watching this scene because you know, Issa's forever daydreaming and having all these crazy thoughts in her head. So for like the first 30 seconds, I was like, okay, Issa's gonna snap out of it. She's gonna snap out of it. She doesn't snap out of it. It's real. Her and Lawrence are a thing. They've been vibing. They've been seeing each other. The chemistry's there. They've both evolved and now they're in a better place. <gasps> Ugh. Listen to me. I was so excited. It's just really dope to see two people that have grown, have matured, taken full accountability and responsibility for the role that each of them played in their breakup, and then just flourishing and becoming greater people and, and making it work and coming back together. You know what I mean? I think oftentimes, like, a lot of relationships, um, especially in this day and age, are just really one and done, right? And, and I'm not condoning cheating or anything like that. I feel like certain relationships just like they they go together. They go together. As long as, as long as they have matured enough, they have forgiven each other, they're looking to move past it and they can reconcile. I'm all for it. It just highlights the importance of communication in every relationship. You know what I mean? And it shows that two people can actually make it through. So as Isa and Lawrence are chilling, they're vibing, Nathan ends up sending a text pretty much saying, hey Isa, like, let me know when you're free type thing. Um, and Isa right away saw that and I love how she took charge. She took control of that situation and said, hey, you know what, Lawrence, this is what it is. Nathan has reached out to me. Um, this is what it is. And she's just being very transparent, which is which is really good for two people that have had those type of issues before. So Lawrence just kind of takes it for what it is. He seems super cool about it, but it doesn't really sit well with Issa, right? Because she's thinking she doesn't want to mess this up. And she tells him that. She's like, yo, I'm not trying to mess this up again. Like, I just really want to be honest. I want to be open with you and let you know, like, hey, this guy from my past just hit me up. Um, and Lawrence was receptive to it. It didn't really seem like a big deal to him, right? So Issa asks Lawrence like, hey, hey, what are we? What is this? What is it that we're doing, right? And so Lawrence is like, yo, whatever you want it to be. I hate when dudes be doing that. Like, you know what I'm trying to ask you. What do you think it is? You tell me. You tell me what you think this is. You're in it with me. Like, don't, ugh, ah. <laughs> I find it so frustrating when we ask that question and it's like, we're doing everything that people in a relationship do, but you want to leave it up to me? Why? So you can throw it back in my face and then tell me that, listen, I'm, <sighs> whew, let me catch myself. Anyways, <laughs> Lawrence was like, hey, you know, it's whatever you want it to be. And at, from that point on, it looked like they were back together. So in this next scene, Molly's with Dr. Rhonda and she's kind of going over her relationships, right? Her intimate relationships and most importantly, her friendship with Issa, right? So Dr. Rhonda points out again, like all the areas where Molly has a difficult time letting certain things go, right? She's done it in the past with a lot of her intimate partners and now here she is doing the same thing with her best friend Issa. So Doc was like, yo, um, what are you what are you what are you trying to do? Are you trying to work on this with Issa? Is it worth salvaging? What do you want to do? But understand that you need to meet people halfway. You need to do the work if that's a relationship that you want to salvage, right? And the scene pretty much ends with Molly kind of like in her thoughts, so to speak. So in this next scene, Issa's really having a hard time coming to 
terms with this whole Nathan Lawrence kind of struggle that's in her head, right? So she reaches out to Kelly at first, Kelly doesn't answer. She then reaches out to her brother, Ahmad ain't got no time. He, so all of his advice is super duper trash. And so, you know, you can see Issa there contemplating, looking at her phone, looking to hit that, that, that button that says Molly. It looks like she went ahead and she called Molly and, and she's talking to Molly, letting Molly know that, you know, she wants to kind of meet up with her. And she slides in there that her and Lawrence are back together. And I'm just like, girl, that's exactly what people hate you for. And then Molly reacted and went off and called her out, right? And so for a split second, I legit thought, I legit thought that that's exactly what happened. But you know Issa B in her head. So it was all a daydream. And I was like, whew, thank God. Thank God that is not how you approach a situation. Because at this point, you know. You know that you and your girl, y'all ain't good. You know what I'm saying? So... Thank God it didn't go that way. But anyways, she does finally end up calling Molly, doesn't get a hold of Molly, leaves a message for Molly, and tells her she's down to meet up um, to talk. So in the next scene, of course, it's Molly and Issa. They meet up. The awkward exchange happens. The awkward conversation happens. Molly's not really engaged, nor is she initiating any conversation, obviously, because like she says, she still thinks that it's all Issa's fault and Issa's the one that needs to make the move. So I guess in Issa's mind, she's thinking, well, you're not bringing it up. So I don't know if I want to bring it up. I'm already awkward. I don't know how to do this. And so they spend what seems like a good chunk of time just catching up about everything that's gone on in their lives except for the main issue. And that pissed me off when I was looking at it. I was like, girl, y'all are sitting here talking and y'all can't talk about what... <clears throat> I wanted to fight them because I'm just like, come on, how many times are we going to go through this Molly and Issa let's talk situation? You know what I mean? So anyways, at the end of um, lunch or whatever... Um, Issa ends up paying for it, which is very different for Molly, right? Molly reaches for her wallet. Issa's like, nah, I got this. Issa's got all kinds of cash in her hands. And it's like, nah, legit. Like, I owe you for like 10,000 brunches or 10,000 meals that you've paid f over the course of our friendship. I got this. And she ends up paying. What I did like, though, is right at the end, on their way out, they told each other that they loved each other, right? And I thought that was super sweet. I definitely felt like there, there was going to be like a follow-up conversation somehow because they didn't really resolve any issues, right? Everything was superficial um, and just kind of glossed over. We have Andrew um, and Molly and Andrew welcomes Molly and says, hey, you know, how did the brunch go? She's like, you know what? Like everything was superficial. It was super fake. I don't think that this is real. And she's in her bag, right? And so Andrew says, well, did you bring it up? Did you say anything? And I'm tired. Molly is so tired. Like she's forever snapping. So she snaps at Andrew a little bit. Like, I can't believe that you would say that to me. Like, why would you say that to me? Like, she needs to apologize. She was in the wrong. Like, I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. It's not me. It's her. Right? So she goes through her whole routine. Andrew is like, okay, you know, I know that you still love her. She's your friend. And then Molly brushes it off, right? Like, it's not a big deal to her. My lovebirds. Oh my gosh. Lawrence and Issa. Um, so Lawrence reaches out to Issa, gives her a call, lets her know that I guess he went for some job interview or something in San Francisco. He lets her know that that went well. Issa then tells him everything's good on her end. And she mentions to Lawrence that, hey, you know, I had a conversation with Molly. Lawrence is like, well, you know, how did it go? She says she loves her. She misses her. And she knows Molly. She knows Molly's nature. So she knows that Molly is still pressed about the situation. But in her mind, she's saying to herself, well, you know what? It's nothing that a little Sunday self-care can't fix. You know what I'm saying? So it'll blow over. We're good. It's crazy how these two friends interacted the way that they did. Did, and they both left with different perspectives. They didn't leave on the same page. They left exactly how they came into it with a lack of communication. Like communication is everything. Like why we gotta be so difficult? And that's my biggest harp with Molly because it's like 
you know, yes, you reached out. We have to acknowledge that Molly did her part. She reached out. But under the circumstances, with everything that Issa had going on with the block party, she just couldn't, she just couldn't tend to her at that particular moment. And for me, I don't understand why that's such a big deal. She has her own communication issues. Issa has her own communication issues. So it's like, they're at a crossroads at this point. In this next scene, Issa shows up to help Nathan move and he's packing his boxes and whatnot. And like Issa is trying to give him the cold shoulder. She's not trying to flirt. She's not trying to get too close to him because she got her boo back and she ain't trying to, she ain't trying to mess up a good thing now. She's in a good space. And Nathan's like pressing her. And it's like, bruh, chill. You know what I mean? So Issa is really trying to create distance and create space between herself and Nathan. He flirts, comes by her, says, says a couple of things to her. And she's like, okay, you know what? Let me be honest with you. I'm, you know, in a situation now with my ex again, we've reconciled. We're working through what we're working through. <sighs> Nathan is all the way in his bag. Okay. Nathan is in love with Issa. He's in love with Issa. He, you know, makes his little snarky remarks about, you know, why you gonna go back to him? Like, he ain't this, he ain't that, da, 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 da. And so Issa defending her man, she's like, nah, he's cool. He's better than, you know, ghosting someone. Ugh. You know what I mean? Like, Nathan felt it. He was in his bag about that. And that's when it was actually revealed that Nathan had bipolar disorder. Um, and now I think that was a really key moment given everything that's going on in the world right now. Mental health is so real. Self-care is so important right now. Um, so I like that they made it a point to actually diagnose him and actually say that this is something that a black man is actually dealing with. I love I love the show for all of its nuances. I love the show for its reality, right? And I think in the black community, mental health is still stigmatized. It's still shamed. Um, and it's really important that we understand that there, there are people that are experiencing challenges um, with their mental health, right? So Issa recognizes that she feels like garbage because she just took a stab at him and you know she she knew that there was something because last season he did end up telling her like hey you know what I do have depression but now we know we have a diagnosis and she feels really bad about it she apologizes and I thought it was super sweet that Nathan wanted to kind of um, make amends with her and really show Issa that yo like I really, I really like you. You know what I mean? I really need you in my life. You're someone that's good for me. You're good for me. You know what I mean? Um, but you see, the thing with Nathan is, boy, I get it. You super sweet and you, you know, you going through what you going through. But listen to me, Issa is, Issa is Lawrence's, okay? I know you may not like that, sir. I had to break it to you. You really cute. I hope you find someone that completes you and can help and can help foster a loving, caring relationship, genuine love for you. You know what I'm saying? But Issa, uh-uh. Insecure has the baddest soundtrack. Like, they have dope tracks. They slid in that Brent Fayaz in there, and I was just singing along, like, let me. Who can I love when they tell me I can't love myself? Uh, how in the hell can I possibly love someone else? Let me know. Listen, that is my jam, okay? That's my tune. I was listening to that earlier. Anyways, <laughs> so in this next scene, you can see Molly and Andrew um, talking and I think this is gonna be a real problem in their relationship going forward because Molly's lack of um, you know effective communication skills and I hope she really gets through it she's with Dr. Rhonda and hopefully she gets she gets through it right her difficulty communicating and her difficulty letting certain things go is going to present a huge problem because despite everything Andrew is really close to his brother right and so they're they're talking about well hey you know, I was with my brother earlier. I had to lie to him and tell him that you were at work to cover your ass. But it's like, girl, 
are you never gonna talk to my brother again? And you know Molly already. She She's already gonna be in her bed. I can't believe that you're gonna ask me to talk to your brother. Like, that is so uncomfortable. It's like, girl, you're in a whole relationship with the man. You know what I mean? Like, you're not going to be able to avoid his brother forever. That is a situation that you have to look to mend. You have to look to mend or else it will drive a wedge between them. And if Molly can't get the communication bit together, she's gonna lose Andrew. So Nathan and Issa show up. It ends up turning into a whole vibe, right? So Nathan and Issa are together. Andrew and Molly are together. They stay, they eat, they, they talk, they chop it up. It seemed like it was a really dope time. And then Molly ended up sending a text that was meant for Andrew to Issa. And it was something, I can't remember the exact words, but it was something along the lines of, like, I'm trying. Like, that's what it was. I see, I'm trying. I'm trying with her. And so Issa gets the text, she looks at it, her whole face changes, she sends a response back and she's like, I don't think that message was meant for me. And so Issa gets up, she's pissed off, obviously she's upset, she's hurt, she storms out, Molly goes ahead, um, kind of running after her, tells her to wait, stop, and I'm thinking, okay, yes, this is the moment we've been waiting for, let us know whether or not it's a thing or it's not. And... It's bittersweet for me because I really, 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 like in the grand scheme of things, was really hoping that Molly and Issa could resolve their issues. But, you know, they just they just couldn't do it, right? So there was just this big back and forth between the two of them. And so Issa's like, you have to meet me halfway. If you want this friendship to work, to go back to the way that it was, you have to meet me halfway. And, you know, it's in that moment that Molly realizes that it's not worth it to her anymore, right? Um, she's willing to part ways with their friendship and she says, hey, you know, maybe the person you are right now and the person that I am right now, we just, we just don't fit. We don't fit together anymore, right? And in that moment, you know, you can see Issa break down. She's hurt. Um, you know, she gets a little choked up and her response was simply, okay. She was just okay, you know? And then even that response caught Molly off guard because in my mind, just based off of their relationship, I think Molly is used to Issa just massaging the situation, right? I think she was expecting Issa to say, oh, come on, Molly, like, let's get together. Okay, let's start from the top. Like, where did I, where did I mess up? Where did I go wrong? And Issa was over it. She was over it. And I'm happy that she made that decision to just leave it where it was. You know what I mean? She tried. It didn't work. Molly is how she's going to be. And that's good. Now, I have to I have to give that same energy to Molly because it's like as much as she annoys me, she has made that decision that she feels like the relationship, their friendship is just not worth it. It's not worth it to salvage. She feels like Issa's a user. She feels like Issa always puts herself first. So what is the point? It's not it's not going to work. It's just not going to work. Two people that are on two different paths right now and just can't seem to communicate effectively enough to explain themselves, to share their perspectives with one another. It is what it is. So to be honest, it's bittersweet for me looking at that just based off of, you know, their friendship and how dope it was until it got sticky. It's best now that they just part ways. If they are able to reunite later on and, you know, sometimes people that people that spend a lot of time together sometimes need time apart, right? Especially when there's a falling out like this, they need time apart. So just like Issa and Lawrence were able to spend time apart and grow, maybe that's what's going to happen with Molly and Issa. Now, I'm not even gonna lie to you. I'm glad. I'm glad. I was panicking this whole episode thinking, listen to me, if canola oil is friggin' pregnant with Lawrence's baby, I'm going to scream. So I'm glad. <laughs> so I'm glad that it didn't come down to that. And like I said previously, one relationship had to be sacrificed, right? Now, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Who is Issa going to choose is it going to be Lawrence or is it going to be Nathan? Now, given the fact that she knows what she knows about him, maybe, just maybe, she might get a little soft spot. But she needs to, she needs to get rid of that spot. 
You are team Lawrence all day, every day. That's where I want her to be. Y'all know that's where I want her to be. And Molly, how do you think their relationship is going to be? Do you think that they're going to be able to eventually get back together as friends? Do you think they're done for good? Let me know in the comment section below. Now, if you haven't done so already, please go ahead, hit that subscribe button for me, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.